What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Brent and since you all love that gel lighting setup so much, I thought let me do a dedicated breakdown for you. I have Emily in the studio with me today and we're excited to get into today's content. Let's hop right in. So before I get my model in place, the first thing that I want to do is set my background. Today I'm going to be using a red gel on a 300 watt strobe and the goal here is to get the background decently saturated. It doesn't have to saturate all the way down to the floor, but I do want it decently saturated so that when we set up our lighting on our model, it just fills in the shadow. So I'm going to take a test shot here. I have my power set to 1 32nd. Let's just see what that gives me. So that's a pretty decent start. I think I do want the red to kind of come down a little bit more. So I'm gonna go up to 1 8th power. See what that gives me there. 1 8th, let's take another test. Three, two. And I'm pretty happy there. I like the saturation at the top and I like the intensity. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my model in the space and set up the lighting setup that will be on her. So the first thing that you wanna make sure that you look out for when your model is on set is that when you take a picture of the background, she is in silhouette. So that's the first thing that I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take a test shot with my model here in the space. Three, two. And what you're gonna notice is that the model should be in full silhouette. Your color gel is taking over the top of the background, but your model is in full silhouette, not having any of that red fall on her face. The next thing we're gonna do is set up our cross lighting setup. So the first light that I'm gonna set up is gonna be my key light. And this is going to be a super large Octabox. You are not limited to using the super large Octabox. I just kinda like this size because it does allow some white light to get onto the floor, and I prefer that. I'm gonna meter this light to F8. Now, since my key light is in the Rembrandt position, I want my cross light to line up directly with it diagonally on my subject. But what I'm gonna do here just to emphasize the red in my color gel is I'm gonna feather this light off a little bit and I'm gonna do the same thing with my key light. So they'll both be feathered a little bit away from the background. That way there's not too much white light shining on in my background. Now that I have my cross lighting set up, I have my key light metered to F8 and I have my backlight metered to F5.6. This is a two to one lighting setup. Now what I'm gonna do is take a test shot. This will be a medium shot with my C light or my gelled light turned off. And what I'm looking for here is just to make sure that we have our proper cross lighting set up. So that means we're still getting the catch light in the model's eyes and there's some shadows above and some shadows below with like a diagonal white light going through our backdrop. Now the last thing that we have left to do is to put it all together. So I will turn my C light back on and I'm gonna start first with a medium shot because I really like the way this effect looks in medium shots. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take a medium shot here and just make sure that I'm liking the way that the red is going. So just look straight at me, three, two. Do one medium and then I'm gonna do one wide shot just to see what's going on down by the feet. Three, two. And with both of those shots, I am very happy with the way that the red is flowing through the backdrop and it is only meant to fill in the shadows. It's not meant to fill in the light parts of the image because white light does drown out our gelled lighting. So with this setup here, I have the big large Octabox and that's going to be throwing just a little bit of light onto our background. So that red is going to be distilled just a little bit. It's gonna come in there just a little bit. But what I'm gonna do now, let's take five or six clicks I'll do mediums and wides just so you can see how this setup plays with your model. All right, so every time I click Emily, just give me something different. Three, two, three, two. Nice, coming close. Three, two. Widen it up. Three, oh, yeah. So right there, you're good. Three, two, three, two. Let me get two more. I'll come really close. So frame the face. Yeah, three, two, last one, three, two, that's perfect. Awesome. And what you're gonna notice is the cross light still acts as a cross light. So anytime that she turns the shadows into the face or you can take them away when she turns into the light, but this will brighten the image just a little bit because you're throwing some light onto that background and subsequently that light is gonna come back onto your subject. So this is a very simple, three light setup that you can put together, but let me show you how you can make it just a little more dramatic. Okay, so one of the changes that we've just made, we put on a little bit of a smaller softbox. I still kept the grid on there, but what I did was now I've kind of moved it to the side, so that way we'll get a little bit more of an even distribution from our gelled light. So it's gonna come across the top a little more even, kept the rim light the exact same, 
feathered it just a little bit more towards camera. And now what I'm gonna do is take a test shot here and show you what this looks like when Emily is looking straight at me. So Emily, you'll look straight on to me. Three, two. And you'll notice this is incredibly moody. I still have my key light meter to F8 and I still have my rim slash edge light meter to 5.6. This is where your directing comes into play. You're really gonna wanna make sure that you're directing your model so that you can utilize the light and the moodiness of this setup to your advantage. So here's what we're gonna do. Emily, what I want you to do is poses that are gonna bring you towards our key light. And we're just gonna snap for a few ticks. Three, two, nice. Three, two, good. Three, two. So as you can see, we're starting to get a whole bunch of light on Emily's face. What I can also do is move myself left to right. So we're still gonna be going into that light, but I'm just gonna come here to the right a little bit. Three, two, nice. Three, two, keep going, go closer. Three, two, bring your eyes to me. Three, two, perfect. And what we now notice is that you use your directing to make sure that your model is moving in the right place, but you don't get cement on your feet either. You can move left to right as well to make sure that you get some interesting frames and just some interesting little setups with the lighting. Notice how I'm able to get her eyes on me as I move to the right, move closer to that light, but we're still able to get a saturated red background. This is one of the many ways that you can make this lighting setup a little more dramatic. All right, everyone, that's gonna do it for another video. I hope you were able to grab something from this and comment down below which color gel you would use in a setup just like this. I wanna give Emily a huge shout out for coming through. Emily, where can the people find you? On Instagram, E-M-X-L-Y-Y-G underscore. You're not gonna remember that. <laughs> so I will put it right here for you so you can spell it correctly. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe, and I will catch you in the next video. Three, two. And what you should notice is that the red is... <sighs> Oh God. <laughs> from, the, from, the from the test shot, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause I'm gonna just cut that anyway, cause it's gonna be.